Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got another NVMe Thunderbolt 3 solid state drive to take a look at. This one from Sabrent. Now a few weeks ago we looked at one from Samsung, their X5, and they are similar in that they both have an NVMe drive inside of them, but they do function a little bit differently insofar as performance is concerned. Now, of course, you do need your Thunderbolt 3 equipped computer for this to work, and it does work on both the Mac and Windows. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this drive came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. The other drive here from Samsung came in through the Vine program back in October as well. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this drive can do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This costs about $200 for a 256 gigabyte version and $249 for a 512 gig version. And initially I thought this was going to be a good deal for a Thunderbolt drive versus the Samsung because the 512 gig Samsung we looked at back in October was $400. Now this costs the same as the 512 gig Sabrent drive. So bear that in mind as we go through some of the performance testing here. Uh, it's no longer the price leader, just given that the uh, fancier Samsung here now costs about the same. At least it does on Amazon at the time I'm recording this video. Uh, the casing here is nice. It's all aluminum versus magnesium on the Samsung. It does have this rubber bumper around it that's got some venting to uh, let it breathe a bit. There's no fan on this, but they do have kind of a little heat sink built into the case. You can take the rubber thing off, and that's my preferred way to use it. I kind of like the, this, the bare metal here. It's pretty solid feeling, and I'd, I'd rather try to prevent having things that allow heat to stay close to the device. It does get a little hot with the rubber thing on it. It will get warm either way, but I think it'll work better without it. So you can take it off and just uh, stretch it out to pop the connector out of it, and you're uh, good to go with it. Now, we did take this apart on the Extras channel. It's very easy to get into. Uh, they have uh, four T5 screws here that you need to get in with, and then you can easily swap out the NVMe. Inside, there's just an M2 slot, essentially, that you can pop in any other uh, NVMe drive if you want. So that's something to think about uh, for upgradability down the road. It does make it kind of an expensive Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, and I hope they actually make a version that is driveless to allow you to put your own drive in. Uh, just because they make a USB-C version, it would be nice to get a little bit more performance available if you'd rather choose what drive goes inside, and that might give them some advantage in the marketplace here. Unlike the Samsung, the cable is essentially soldered into the motherboard of this thing. So when we took it apart, we noticed that uh, the cable was soldered onto this little connector that went inside another connector to get everything working. Uh, on the Samsung, you just have a standard Thunderbolt connector to pop it in and out. So that's the one thing I didn't like about it is that this cable is uh, kind of in the way when you're traveling with it. You can't just unplug it and put the cable away. Uh, and that was something that I did not like about it. So other than that, it's a pretty basic, simple case here. But what I want to do now is uh, get this thing connected up to my Mac and we'll run some tests on it. And we'll also look and see how it performed on my Windows machine and we'll come up with some recommendations. All right, so we've got it hooked up to my Mac and we are running a speed test on it right now. One thing to note though, is that this light here is always on irrespective of what the drive is doing. So it's not an indicator light so much as it is a power light. Now, looking at its Blackmagic disk speed test performance here, you can see that we're getting almost a gigabyte per second on write speeds, and we're reading at about 2.2 gigabytes per second. Uh, so this will certainly do better, perhaps, than some of those USB-C NVMe enclosures we looked at a little while back. Uh, but it is not as fast as the Samsung. The Samsung can actually write uh, as fast as the reads are here. So you'll definitely get a better sustained uh, read and write performance on the Samsung, certainly more so on the writes. But overall, uh, for a portable solid state drive, this will do a lot better than many of the USB-C based solid state drives we have looked at here on the channel, especially when it comes to sustained reading and writing. Uh, and that's going to be important for doing backups and copying large video files over and everything else. Now, one thing this drive has done better versus the Samsung is maintaining its read and write performance over time. What we noticed with the Samsung drive is that uh, when it got too hot, it would slow down. So you would often get performance about what we're now getting uh, out of the Sabrent when the Samsung drive started throttling itself. And typically that would begin appearing 
about five minutes or so into this test as the drive got hotter. And I would imagine the writes tend to drive a lot of that heat. So although the Sabrent here is not as fast writing, uh, there are times if you're doing a long sustained write that they may actually end up being the same due to uh, how the Samsung throttled itself. But this is not the only test to run on a drive. Uh, we also ran the Crystal Disk Mark test on Windows to get a picture of how well it does with random reads and writes and other kinds of activities that uh, might result in different performance numbers. So let's take a look at that. So here are the Crystal Disk Mark results. The Sabrent drive is on the right, the Samsung on the left. Uh, you can see, of course, the Samsung has better read and write sequential performance. That's the first score. But as we work our way down to some of these random read and write tests, you can see that uh, the Samsung does a lot better with random writing to the drive, significantly so. And it's also much faster on random reads too, except that last result there. So generally, I think the Samsung is going to provide much better overall performance, even with some of that throttling that might be going on, especially if you're looking to use this as a boot drive on the Mac, for example, or you're doing operations that really require more random reads and writes versus just straight up video capturing or encoding. So it really matters on what you're going to do. Now, whenever I look at one of these solid state drives, I like to run with this test project in Final Cut Pro. This is a multi-cam 4K edit and it's able to play two 4K streams here without any problems. And generally this is something that gives us a good idea as to how the drive might work with a real world kind of project. I think I might actually start adding a third feed into the mix here to push this a little further. There was a time when external drives couldn't do this at all, but as you can see here, this one seems to be uh, performing just fine as we would expect it to. So that is the Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 NVMe drive. Not a bad performing drive, but the Samsung here does perform better and now pretty much costs the same, which I think changes the metric on this a little bit. I would actually like to see them release this as an enclosure only, which I think would be very attractive because again, you could choose what goes inside of it and that might be a better option than having it come with included storage. So if one of those comes out, we'll try to grab one in the uh, weeks to come here. But until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.